So I previously made a kind of a demo video comparing a KNS discarder and a scarburator from Mototech. And in that, I mentioned I was testing some various muzzle devices. Uh, I made a post on this and read it in the uh, RNFA sub. Uh, if you want to go there and look at it, I have some, some kind of table showing data and stuff and what's going on. But I figured I should probably make a video too at some point. And uh, finally got around to that. So, uh, in context, if you clicked on this video and are unfamiliar, or if you saw the previous video and want to know more, uh, the CGS Helios is a very unique silencer in that it has some annular vents in its second chamber. The gas can then vent to the annulus of the silencer or some perimeter channels. It'll then recombine later, uh, creating turbulence and slowing down your gas flow. Tends to work well in higher pressure 30 cal guns, uh, not as well in shorty 556 five, guns. You uh, lose a lot of your initial pressure in uh, the expansion in your blast baffle, and uh, the gas not being as high pressure and funneled into that second chamber, it doesn't expand as well uh, through those vents, so you get worse sound. Uh, how much worse if you look at Pew Science? I believe he compares a Hyperion K which is essentially uh, what the silencer would be if you, if you removed that blast baffle and it immediately could vent. And uh, it performed better, and he could also get a muzzle device, which more directly funneled gas past the blast baffle in the Helios QD, making it act very similarly. So I happened to be tuning my SCAR and discovered that, and I originally tested this with a SCAR baiter and a 60-inch barrel, that... Some muzzle devices may influence your overall back pressure. Air quotes on that. It's more complicated than that. But back pressure on your system. And it would stand a reason that if you're reducing your back pressure on the system, somehow the silencer is also probably a little quieter. I don't have a way to measure this. Someone with some technology, I'm sure, certainly can. But if you go and take uh, various mounts and compare them on a highly tunable system, such as the SCAR here, you can adjust a regulator, such as this one, and compare function. So in theory, if I need full gas for one and I need no you know, minimum gas for the other, then there's an obvious difference. Well, not that gross, there were adjustments uh, between the various muzzle devices when I tested them on a older 16-inch barrel. This thing's pretty shot out. Um, not the most accurate anymore. And in case you're unfamiliar, the SCAR is a short stroke piston gun. It has a small piston that resides in the gas block here that is pushed back into the bolt carrier group. And you're imparting all that momentum on it, cycling it. The BCG is quite big. Let's see if I can hold this at an angle where you can kind of see it. You can see quite long. I would take it apart, but YouTube will be mad at me, so I'm not going to do that. So, let me throw this thing back on the table. Anyway, so I uh, originally had tested the direct thread mount that comes with the silencer in comparison with this Liberty Precision uh, Liberty Bell. Yeah, li this is li their Liberty Bell. Uh, I got this for just the, the theoretical improved sound of having a break, uh, not necessarily uh, being aware that it would potentially affect back pressure. So on this particular barrel length with the scarburator, when I compared these, I had to turn it down further to get the DT to fail, i.e. I had to choke the gas more to get the uh, weapon to fail to function with the direct thread mount. That was with a factory gas jet in this barrel. If I took the can as a scarter, I got the same result, except different position numbers. When I jump down to a 10.5 barrel, I have a 1.8 millimeter gas jet in it, which is lower than what they will usually throw in a 10-inch barrel. It's usually a 2 millimeter, at least in the reciprocating scars. I don't know about the non-reciprocating. I think it's less. Um, but with that, really overgassed for where I live. Uh, so I, I stepped down, 1.8 seemed to be a pretty good one. I had really good resolution with that. 
If I went lower, I got some more erratic jetting, less consistent in the uh, position stuff would fail in, occasionally it would cycle, uh, occasionally it wouldn't, kind of inconsistent. That's a theme anyway, but it seemed more erratic, so I, I stuck with 1.8. As far as tunability, great. Um, with pretty much any of these, I can get stuff to run uh, unsuppressed and fail suppressed. So, talking about stuff specifically, uh, this particular DT mount is not exactly great. Uh, when I swapped for a, there we go, this is a Reardon Atlas for the Helios, it's got taper. If I take this and I take, let's say, the R2S from Reardon, and you thread it in and you thread it in the can, it protrudes pretty similarly to the flash prongs there, and your orifice is further away because your, your barrel's way back here. However, the gas is kept together a bit tighter, and it appears to funnel the gas better into the second chamber. And because this muzzle device has such a wide opening, uh, your shockwave and gas will funnel back down your barrel if it reflects off something. And this being so wide, your crown's exposed, and I suspect it's diffusing some of that off the crown, slowing your, your shockwave and uh, diffusing gas going backwards. So, it sort of makes sense in theory. Some of these are a bit wider. Same on the FHD, the Liberty Eclipse. It's a little tighter. Uh, I have a another Liberty Bell, different thread pitch, and it's got a 9mm bore, and I used a thread adapter and compared it. So I compared all these, uh, and I noted the function where they functioned and failed to function. Uh, how I did this as far as uh, what it means, I basically would fire the gun uh, with a uh, one round in the chamber and a 30 round mag seated, so if the, round, the mag had 30 rounds in it. Uh, if it would feed, I would then take an empty mag and check lock back on that one round. I would then adjust the regulator down one position until one of those two things failed. Uh, once I did that, I would go back up a position, repeat that again up to 10 times just to make sure it would really run there, and I didn't just get a fluke or two, and do that until I got it to do it successfully 10 times in whatever position. And I recorded that for all of those muzzle devices there. I also recorded that for what I have on here currently, which, let me take this off. It is a little tight. Hold on. There we go. Uh, quite thin. I have a Otter Creek Labs Zero DTA, direct thread adapter, I'm assuming is what that stands for. You add about an eighth an inch to overall length. I know that witness mark's not aligned. Uh, I had torqued it after. But you have wrench flats for a socket. It, well, it's, well, not really wrench flats, but socket uh, inside there so you can install it in your can and then you just torque it on your rifle with the flats on the silencer. Um, as far as the uh, best performers, I can't say which objectively is 100% the best, but the ones that seem to be the uh, best as far as the back pressure consistently uh, wanting to run in the higher positions, which is better for the regulator, here because again you're having less back pressure, was the R2S, the regular uh, one half by 28 Liberty Bell, and this um, Otter Creek Otter Creek Slab adapter. The uh, test I did was with M193 and Mark 262. Uh, M193, all of them are pretty comparable. Not a huge difference. I mean, there is some difference, but it's not uh, it's not wide enough that I think it matters a whole lot. With Mark 262, some really weird stuff happened. I don't believe that's inconsistency of the ammo itself. It might be inconsistencies of the the barrel length contributing to that just because of the weird stuff that short barrels do. But I'm pretty sure that uh, the powder burn rate and all that fancy stuff was fairly consistent bet between the uh, the 
the boxes I shot, it was all the same lot number. So I'm going to go ahead and just guess that uh, the muzzle devices do actually have a pretty noticeable effect in that case. Um, these happen to be the ones that seem to be the best in that case. The, r the rest of these are all pretty comparable. The only ones that I really don't think are fantastic are the shorter ones, as you would probably guess, but just for this particular can. Keep in mind, this is only in regards to a CGS Helios QD, and this should not be extrapolated to uh, other calibers, and it might not even be um, interchangeable between hosts. A piston gun and a DI gun sound significantly different because of port pop. You have some venting up here, not coming out the back of your um, gas tube in, in your receiver. Something else I'll note, the extension ring that is included is detrimental to the silencer's performance. You should not use any mount that uses this if you want it to be as quiet as possible. Uh, as far as the other muzzle devices, it's really what is the best for you. Uh, Application-wise, do you plan to shoot unsuppressed or suppressed only dedicated? And um, do you want some blast baffle protection if you do that? For example, the... Eclipse is a flash hider that also acts as a sacrificial baffle, so it's a very good intermediate, and it did well. Not um, what I would call the likely to be the best, but it did well. Uh, I just happen to like the uh, Otter Creek Slab one because it's so small. Um, you, you lose a lot of length that way. For comparison, I would be adding the length of that. For the regular direct thread and if you go with the Reardon adapter that's how far it's success so you're moving the whole thing out a decent bit anyway let me go back and thread that um, everything except the uh, Otter Creeks adapter I have the Atlas mount and the regular uh, Liberty Bell was provided to me either by Reardon, uh, Mr. Wetwork there on Reddit, I don't know what his actual name is, I apologize, or Riley at LPM, uh, both great folks. And then I happened to also use this for a control design muzzle device that someone sent me, and that's what I had did a video on previously. Um, anyway... Uh, I would I would recommend trying out some different muzzle devices with the silencer in your setup if you have some way to compare them. It would be kind of difficult if you don't have an adjustable regulator where you're kind of just gut feeling it. Uh, I would say that some of these might have enough of a difference on your host that you could just tell subjectively, but uh, given that I can just click this and know that, hey, it's got less gas or, hey, it's got more gas, it's pretty easy to compare. Uh, I will have a link to that Reddit post in the comments, or in the comments, in the description, if someone wants to refer to that. But I figured I'd make a random rambly YouTube video, because some people don't check that, and uh, someone can stumble upon it if they're doing research on this can and likes that stuff. Uh, I find random guys on YouTube that make low-quality videos very valuable. Uh, there's a great video on the MDRX that a guy made talking about his engineering flaws, I think it's his only video he's made, and I think he made his channel, named his channel MDRX or something like that. But uh, stuff like that's nice. It's uh, some guy that's clearly not bought and just wants to help other people out. So I try to do the same with my videos and uh, hope that someone finds this somewhat interesting and maybe make some interesting purchase decisions, or maybe someone can design their own muzzle device and do some research and see what what would be a ideal muzzle device. Uh, for this particular silencer or others. In others where you don't have to vent to an annular chamber, it probably matters a little less, and it's not as big of a deal. But for this silencer, uh, you can get a lot of different performance just based off the muzzle devices themselves. And Pew Science uh, was kind of what inspired this when he talked about a cherry bomb uh, having his making his scar uh, recoil significantly harder. So, anyway, that's it. Thanks.